You're listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby, Director of Torch, the Torah Outreach Resource Center of Houston. This is the Jewish Inspiration Podcast. One of the important questions that needs to be addressed on Rosh Hashanah is that we're going to be standing in synagogue this year. It's not on Shabbos. We don't blow the shofar on Shabbos. We blow the shofar only on a weekday. So the second day of Rosh Hashanah is on Sunday. So we'll blow the shofar only on Sunday. So the question is, what should we be thinking? We're standing there, and they blow the shofar. A hundred sounds. At first, it's a terror. It's 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 terrifying. The sound of the shofar just hits. It penetrates. But then, what happens? Starts weakening. What do I do now? Well, I'm just hearing sounds. Okay, it's nice. What are we supposed to be thinking when we hear the shofar? So my dear friends, open up your hearts. Imagine you're sending an email. You're drafting an email. And you're writing a very delicate email to your boss and you're saying to your boss all the reasons why you deserve a raise. And you're drafting it and you're sending it a copy to your confidant, to your friend. And they're looking over it. And then you're ready to send the email. Did you write the email? You wrote the email. You edited the email. Everything is ready to go. But did you click send? Didn't click send. So it's, it's in the ether. It doesn't exist yet. The moment you click send is the sound of the chauffeur. The chauffeur sound is clicking send. That's what it is. It's when you're, the entire month we've been preparing and preparing and preparing for Rosh Hashanah, for standing in front of Hashem and to make God king of the universe and to make God king over us. Okay, finally Rosh Hashanah comes. Click send. That's the shofar blowing. When you hear the shofar sounds, it's Hashem receiving, so to speak, our prayers. Or say, just tell us that the sound of the shofar embodies all of our prayers and it penetrates the heavens, brings it to God's throne. That's why there's also a certain sequence, a certain sequence of sounds. That's the code. So that the email gets to the right place. My dear friends, it is so important for us to realize that Rosh Hashanah is one big making God king. It's the coronation of our king. If you watch the coronation of a king of flesh and blood this year, it gives you a millionth of a per, of, 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 of millionth, a billionth, a trillionth of a concept of what we're doing on Rosh Hashanah, making Hashem king. Hashem wants us to make him king over us. To not have other disruptions. To not have other distractions. To not have other things. And that's what the shofar declares. Which is why I recommend that a person should take a time to meditate, to think, to contemplate, to introspect before the shofar blowing. You know why? Because get ready, draft that email, edit it. Because when we blow that shofar, we're clicking send. We're giving Hashem our thoughts. We're giving Hashem our heart. We're giving Hashem our desires. We're giving Hashem all of our worries. We're giving it all to Hashem. And we're letting go. That's it. And you know what we do then after that? What we said earlier. We go to the body of water where, by the way, it used to be that they would crown the kings by the water. Many reasons for that. Also, we mentioned here, the next piece here, that we blow the shofar of a ram 
because God, uh, Abraham brought Isaac as an offering to God in the binding of Isaac, and instead he brought a ram. You know what the Midrash tells us? The Midrash tells us that when Abraham was going to the destination where God said he should go, which we know today is Temple Mount, suddenly there was a river in front of him. And Abraham said, I'm not stopping because of a river. The Yetzahara made a river appear in front of Abraham so that he not go and offer a son. Abraham says, I don't care. I'm going through. And he starts walking through the river till the water reaches his nostrils. And then the water just vanishes. He was not going to get stopped by anything. Committed. In memory of that ram, we blow the shofar, specifically from a ram. So the long shofars that we have are not from a ram, which is why it's best not to blow those for the hundred sounds. It's best to blow a different shofar. But my dear friends, this is Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is a time of standing in front of Hashem and letting go. Letting go. Hashem, you're the king. I have nothing. I have nothing without you. You're my everything. Everything. I have nothing. Anybody who's been faced with any type of medical illness knows the level of how delicate we are. We're so delicate. Just ask, a man, just ask a man with a cold. He'll tell you. His whole life falls apart. You just have a little cold. Say, you know what they say, the only person who can understand the woman who gives birth without an epidural is a man who has a cold. The Gemara cites another statement about the shofar. Amr Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yitzchak says, Lama token by Rosh Hashanah, why do we sound the shofar on Rosh Hashanah? So the, the Gemara now is like, what? What are you talking about? Lama token, Rachmana Amr Tiku, Hashem says in the Torah, blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. What, do you, what type of question is that? Why do we blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah? The Torah says to blow the shofar. Hashem says in his Torah, blow the shofar. The Gemara rephrases the question. Ela lama marin. Why do we sound a terua on Rosh Hashanah? The Gemara is equally puzzled by this version. Sound of terua? Because Rachmana Amar, Hashem says in his Torah, Zichron terua, a mention of a terua blast. What do you want to have a question? The Gemara qualifies, clarifies the question even more. Rather, why do we sound a tekiah and a teruah when the congregation are sitting? And then, again, sound the tekiah and teruah while they're standing. Says that, no, that's a good question. In order to confuse the satan. That's why today, this morning in synagogue, I'm not going to say it loud. But in synagogue, we didn't blow the shofar this morning. I didn't blow the shofar this morning. Every day of, Rosh, of Elul, aside for Shabbos, for 28 days, we blow the shofar. Today, the 29th, we don't blow the shofar. You know why? To confuse the Satan. He's like, one second. They were getting ready for Rosh Hashanah. Now they're not blowing the shofar. Uh-oh. I think I missed it. It confuses him. He doesn't know. He's off his game. He's off his game. You've been listening to the Jewish Inspiration Podcast, a Torch production. Become a supporter at torchweb.org because your assistance enables more Torah learning around the globe. To find more lessons offered by Torch, please visit torchpodcast.com.